Hello everyone. Welcome to Naso Academy. In the previous lecture, we understood basics of I/O Stream. We understood the difference between I/O Stream as the library and I/O Stream as the header file. Now we are in this lecture, and the name of this lecture is Basic Input and Output. In this lecture, we will understand what is input and output, and how we can perform input and output operations. So, without any further delay, let's get started with this lecture and let's see what are the topics. The first topic of this lecture is STD C out. First, we will understand what is STD C out in C plus plus and how we can use it. Then we will move to the next topic where we will understand STD and L. After understanding STD and L, we will move to the last topic where we will understand STD C in. So there are a total of three topics in this lecture which we need to deal with. Let's get started with the first topic, that is STD C out. So what is STD C out? STD C out stands for Standard Character Output. STD came from standard, C came from character, and out came from output. So this represents Standard Character output. It is used to display data as the sequence of characters to the console. With the help of STD Cout, we can display some data as the sequence of characters to the console window. We know what is the console window. When we execute our program in C++, then we will get the console window, which is the black screen as the result. In the black screen, we would be able to see the output of our programs. So this is what the console window is. With the help of STD C out, we can display data over there. The third point is, it is included in IO stream header file. We know this already. The declaration of STD C out is available in IO stream header file. We need to include this header file in order to use STD C out. I hope this is clear to you. Now let's take one example to help us understand how to use STD C out in C++. Here is the example program. I have included the IO stream header file because I'm going to use STD C out in this program. Here we have this main function and within this main function we have this line. STD C out, then these two less than symbols, then 42. With the help of this line, 42 will be displayed on the screen, but not as an integer, but as the sequence of characters. This is what I've mentioned here. 42 is converted to a sequence of characters, 4 and 2, although it is an integer, but it will be displayed as the sequence of characters. This is what I've mentioned here. The data is always displayed as the sequence of characters to the console. Apart from this, we need to understand the meaning of this specific operator. We have two less than symbols here. This represents an operator. Precisely, this is called the insertion operator. Why it is called the insertion operator? Because with the help of this operator, we insert the value on the right-hand side to the left-hand side. We are inserting this value to STD C out. This will help us display this value on the screen. Because STD C out represents the console window. I hope this is clear to you. What is the meaning of this insertion operator? It is the combination of these two less than symbols. And you can observe the direction is from right to left. Because we are inserting value of the right hand side to the left hand side. That is why this operator makes sense. So, we have two less than symbols here. This is what we need to remember. Now, when we execute this program, we will get this output 42 on the console window. But this is not the integer. This is equivalent to the sequence of characters 4 and 2. I hope this idea is clear to you what is STD C out and how we can use it in our C++ programs. Now, let's say that this value represents the age of some person. And we want to indicate this to the user. 
That is, we want to display some message on the screen that indicates the user that this value represents the age of some person. For this purpose, I want to display, let's say, age is 42. In order to display this message, we can use insertion operator twice. And this means we can chain insertion operator like this. Here, I have used this insertion operator twice. This insertion operator allows us to insert this specific string to STDC out. And this insertion operator allows us to display this value on the screen. That is, it allows us to insert this value in STDC out. So, when we execute this program, we will get this output age is 42. First, this string is provided to STDC out with the help of insertion operator. That's why we are seeing age is. Then 42 is provided. We will get 42 on the screen. So, we are getting this message. Age is 42. Now, the output is more clear to us. So, in this way, if we want to display such kind of an output, we can use insertion operator like this. Now, let's say we want to store this value in some variable and in place of this value, we want to use that variable. We can do this as well. We can store this value in the variable called age. This is the name that I have provided from my side. I have initialized this variable to value 42. This variable is of type int. It can hold this value. Now, here in place of value 42, I am using this variable age. This will display the same output, age is 42. I hope the idea is completely clear to you how we can use STDC out in our C++ programs. So, with this, we are done with the first topic that is STDC out. Now, let's move to the second topic where we will understand STD and L. So, what is STD and L and why is it useful? In order to understand STD and L and its importance, let me ask you this question. What is the output of the following program? Let's say this is the program and we want to determine the output of this program. Pause for 10 seconds, take your time and try to answer this question on your own. So, what do you think? What is the output of this program? I hope you have solved this problem and you got the output as well. So, what's the output? You might be thinking that hello must be displayed in one line and I am a teacher in the next line because this is how the format looks like in the program as well. We have these two statements in separate lines. Hello must be displayed in the first line and I am a teacher in the second line. But this is not how C++ works in reality. When we execute this program, we will get this output. Hello, I am a teacher in the same line. You might get surprised by this output, but this is the output we get. Now, why is this the case? The reason is pretty simple. Here, we are not explicitly telling the C++ that we want a new line after hello. We want to display I am a teacher in the new line, but we are not telling this to the C++. That's why we are getting hello, I am a teacher in the same line. We can tell this explicitly by using std and l. We need to specify std and l at the end of this cout statement. We need to specify something like this. Here we need to provide the insertion operator. And after this, std and l. This will be provided to std c out and it tells we need a new line. After displaying hello, new line will be displayed and therefore I am a teacher will be displayed in the next line. So when we execute this program, we will get this output hello, I am a teacher in their respective lines. So, this is the output we are getting in the same format we have here in our program. I hope this concept is clear to you. We need to explicitly tell C++ that we need a new line. And we can do this with the help of std and l. 
This object is also available in IO stream. So we need to include IO stream no matter what. So with this, we have understood the second topic also that is STD and L. Now let's move to the third topic where we will understand STD CN. So what is STD CN? As the name suggests, STD CN stands for Standard Character Input. STD came from standard, C came from character and in came from input. So in represents input. There we had out. Out represents output. In represents input. It is used to read input from the keyboard. STDC in is helpful in reading input from the keyboard. So if we want to receive input from the user, that too with the help of the keyboard, then we can use STDC in. Now here comes the third point. It works with the extraction operator to put the data in a variable. In case of STDC in, we have the extraction operator. If you remember, in case of STDC out, we have the insertion operator. In this case, we have the extraction operator because we want to extract input from the user and we want to place it somewhere, in some variable. We have this extraction operator, which is the combination of these two greater than symbols. So I hope this is clear to you. It works with the extraction operator to put the data that we receive from the user in a variable. That's the third point. Now here is the fourth point. It is included in IO stream header file. Just like std c out and std end l, it is also included in IO stream header file. Now here is a simple example to demonstrate std c in in C++. This is how we can use STDCN. I have included the IO stream header file correctly. And here I have defined this main function. Within this main function, I have defined this variable age and I have initialized it to zero. These empty braces indicate that this variable has been initialized to zero. Now, after this, I have written this line STDCN, then the extraction operator, and then the variable age. Through this extraction operator, we can receive input from the user and we can put that input in this variable age. I'm assuming that user will provide the age of some person. We will receive that age in this age variable because of this line. I hope this is clear to you. After this, with the help of STDC out, we will get the message on the screen. You entered a specific age. Now, when we execute this program, we will see the console window. There, we can provide the input. Let's say we have provided this input, 40. When we hit enter, we will get the output, you entered 40. We are getting the correct output here. This output clearly tells us that the age variable has received the value 40. And this is the reason why we have 40 in place of age variable here. That's why we are getting this output, you entered 40. I hope this is clear to you. So with this, we learned how to use STDC in to receive a specific input from the user. This is just one input. What if we want to receive multiple inputs? We can chain extraction operator for this purpose. Let's say we want to receive the gender from the user as well then we can chain this extraction operator like this. Here I have defined this variable gender. I have initialized it to zero. Then here you can observe that I have chained the extraction operator to receive more than one inputs, precisely two inputs. I want to receive age and gender of the user. Here, we will receive age and here we will receive the gender from the user. After this, with the help of this statement, we would be able to display this message age colon the specific age. Then we will get the new line. And then in the next line, we will get gender colon the specific gender. Now, when we execute this program, we will again see the console window. And let's say the inputs we provide is 30 and m. These are the inputs we have provided 30 and m. 
30 will be received in the variable age and M will be received in the variable gender. After hitting enter, we will see this output age colon 30 and gender colon M. You can observe the correct output in place of the variable age, we have this value 30 and in place of this variable gender, we have capital M. This means our program is working correctly and this shows how we can receive multiple inputs from the user. So with this, we have learned the STDC in properly and this means we are done with the third topic as well and this clearly means we are done with this lecture. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this lecture. I will see you in the next one.